Hello, folks. Welcome to Between Awesome and Disaster. This is your host, Will Carey. I appreciate you tuning in. I hope you are doing well, taking care of those closest to you. And uh, thanks for being here. This is episode 300 of Between Awesome and Disaster. It's kind of amazing to think that um, I, I, I hit this milestone. I'm super uh, excited about this. This is one of my favorite things that I have made in my creative career, career and I'm extremely, uh, I, I feel like a real sense of accomplishment uh, for, for getting this far. Um, and I want to especially uh, thank everyone who is involved in, uh, in getting me uh, to 300 episodes of this podcast. And that is, of course, um, all of my guests, because without my guests, uh, I don't have a podcast. Because where I think I have found a strength of mine is having conversations like the kinds I have on, on this show and um, really like having a way of connecting with people in a way that I find it difficult to do when I'm not on the, uh, talking on this microphone. Um, so I especially appreciate everyone who has taken time out of their day and busy schedules uh, to sit down and chat with me. Um, thank you. And uh, thank you for everyone who has uh, listened uh, and, and um, been a, a part of uh, 300 episodes of this podcast. Uh, I tremendously appreciate it. And uh, I, I, I'm looking forward to, uh, to, what's, uh, to what's to come in the next 300 or, or what have you ep episodes. Because I want to keep doing this as long as I enjoy doing it and as long as people are willing to talk to me. Because this is a very fun, fun thing to do. I enjoy every aspect of it. And there's not a ton of things that I can can say that about where the work is joyful, even like the little minutiae and all uh, everything, because I'm pretty much still a, a solo operation uh, when it comes to the booking, recording, editing, and uh, everything that goes into making this podcast. Granted, I have to talk to, to someone, um, but for a handful of, for a couple of ex uh, exceptions where I, I've definitely gotten help from some very, uh, talented talented people um i i i i'm i feel uh accomplished uh today at 300 episodes and i appreciate everyone who has listened and everyone who has talked to me uh you you all are the reason i've got here so uh i appreciate it um the holidays uh the holidays have just passed we're coming out of the the haze of that um and i'm feeling good and Today's episode of uh, the show is going to be more than just me genuflecting on uh, th 300 episodes, but my guest today is, <laughs> I'm super excited about, um, my guest on the show today is actress Marilyn Gigliotti, uh, uh, Veronica from Clerks, Clerks and uh, Clerks 3. Uh, she is a essential part, uh, her, her character in those movies is an essential part of not only the first Clerks movie, but the View Askew universe as a whole. Uh, I've been a fan of uh, Kevin Smith. I've been a fan of Kevin Smith's movies since I first saw Clerks. I remember the first time I saw Clerks, the original, I was in college, and I rented it from the very tiny video store, uh, on-campus video store at Towson University. And I was not in a, a great place emotionally at the time, um, and I would, my weekends would consist of, I'd rent two movies on Friday, uh, I'd return them, watch two movies on Saturday and order Chinese food. And I, I didn't really go out. I kind of was in a period of like hermiting. So this, uh, was one of the movies that I saw for the first time during that period of like really going in deep on watching movies in like a, a way separate from casual film listening and clerks having been uh, my only work experience at the time was in retail uh, I felt very seen and uh, the laughs in, in Clerks are very cathartic uh, and I even remember seeing Clerks 2 um, in uh, at the Center Theater in Baltimore and laughing harder than I ever have and uh, Clerks 3 um, 
which I saw relatively recently. And uh, Marilyn is a uh, has an excellent uh, scene, an excellent role in Clerks Three. Um, but that movie, like, threw me a lot of emotional like left and right hooks that I wasn't prepared for when I came to watching it. I had a little bit of a sense of what it, of what it was going to handle with from the from the trailer, but I was not prepared to really feel the feelings that that mo- that Clerks 3 was going to give me and Marilyn has uh what I think a a essential uh part in that movie and her scenes in particular with uh Dante who played by Brian O'Halloran um really like pulled me into the to the movie and to the story even more so than I already was so I am so incredibly excited to share this conversation um, with uh, Marilyn Gigliotti, um, who, uh, as, over the course of the conversation, we bonded over our own shared retail uh, moments, which I do think I bring up in the uh, at a certain point as well. But um, this is a great conversation. If you're a, an aspiring actor, or if you're someone like me, me who has um, been doing creative things, acting, music, podcasts, whatever, for a long time. I feel like there's a lot of valuable uh, insight and there's some like really great stories like about the Clerks Street shooting process, all of this stuff and like the post-Clerks, post-Sundance uh, 90s thing, just kind of like the what goes into being an, an actor um, of note uh, at, at, the, at, this, at this level. So I was... Very intrigued to to get to talk with Marilyn, and and I am so excited that she uh, wanted to talk to me as well, and I really enjoyed this. So I think you will as well. So, folks, episode three hundred. That means I have two hundred ninety nine other episodes you might not have uh, have heard. So if you haven't, I have had uh, some amazing conversations with actors, actresses, um, comedians, uh, folks from the world of pop punk and indie rock. Uh, you might find your new favorite band or really learn something else about one of your favorite people from this podcast. But again, uh, as I say every week, anything you want to know about me is at uh, awesomedisaster.com. And I also want to thank uh, the person who recently bought some merch uh, from the podcast. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And again, if you want to get some as well, you can go to awesomedisaster.com. But uh, let's talk to Marilyn Gigliotti of Clerks. And Clerks Three. Anybody uh, that wants to talk to me, but I'm especially excited to talk to you because I was like very excited to see Clerks Three. Like I went and saw it by myself in the theater, and I was very excited to get to see uh, see you on 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 screen again for the, for that film, um, and. I wanted to ask you a little bit about this because I feel like your character, like in a movie that has a lot of unexpectedly very emotional moments, I feel like you hit like early on with like the feelings as, as far as like when Veronica comes back and like the way her life is at that moment when she intersects with Dante and Randall again. Yeah. Um, and I've heard some people tell me that that's kind of where the point where things kind of took a turn for everybody and just really was all of a sudden, like if they were on the edge of their seat, this one really kind of put them on the edge of their seat. Um, yeah. And uh, it's like, oh, what's going on? You know, what's going on here and stuff like that. But, um, but I also know that it's like a lot of people were just thrilled to, to see me, which <laughs> that was awesome um, because I, I think I attended it's like one, two, three, four, five, about eight screenings um, between mm-hmm. the very start of the convenience tour and then when it came to LA. And um, yeah, it was it was really heartwarming. Um, you know how how they showed the love. <laughs> uh huh. Um, but yeah, definitely a lot of 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 an emotional roller coaster that many people didn't see coming um and when they tell me it's like i don't usually cry it's like and i cried and i'm like good <laughs> good <laughs> we did our job oh one 100% like totally 
got the the job done like hit those moments like especially like you and brian in the in the suv like and you're like really talking about your lives at that at that moment um it, it was like very very uh effective i i really loved that that scene and especially like i'm not gonna i'll be kind of kind of vague but when kevin decides to like force awakens uh the the movie um right. and then and then again like the whole climax of the film just like really took me to places i i didn't think i was gonna go with the third clerk's movie but yeah. it was uh, a real del uh, delight um let me ask you this when did because like the saga of clerks three coming into fruition was is like a multi-year process when did you you know you were going to be involved in this movie? Um, well, actually, um, L.A. Comic-Con 2019. Um, I always have to remember when we went into lockdown, if it was 2019 or 2020, but it was 2020, March of 2020. Um, we were all there uh, promoting Jay and Silent Bob reboot. Mm -hmm. uh, and we were, uh, Brian and I were at the Legion M booth and they also had a uh, kind of Jay and Silent Bob uh, contest, you know, mm -hmm. so there were many Jay and Silent Bobs that came out. Um, I can't remember if there was a contest of who were better or anything like that, um, but uh, there was a, a marriage proposal. <laughs> And oh, wow. um, at a certain point, Kevin uh, wanted Brian, myself, and Jason to get in front of the facade because they had the Clerks 3 facade, I mean, Clerks facade from Reboot. And at a certain point, uh, Kevin says, everybody hold up three fingers. And so I'm just kind of holding the three fingers up. I, it didn't dawn on me. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> I was just like, oh, I, I turned to him and I'm like, what, does, does this mean that I'm in? And he, he does his, you know, you know, that, mm -hmm. that look. Yeah. That's <laughs> sort of like uh, mm -hmm. Casey does. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I, I, I really let out the biggest hurrah <laughs> that uh -huh. must be heard throughout the convention floor um, as loud as it gets. Um, and it was pretty much, I forget, there was a time that he did send me um a draft i don't know if it was the first or second um draft um, to read get my take mm -hmm. on it like that which was which was i was honored um because that hadn't happened before other than me picking up the original script um to see if i was okay with with some of the things in the language and sure all that kind sure of like um so yeah i was really honored that he 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 had me read it and um the first thing that i had that caught my eye though was uh black parade uh, uh -huh. he, he did have that in the script i'm like oh you're really gonna have that um you know and as long as they could get the rights i was like oh that's awesome because i love that song mm -hmm. um oh yeah but uh but yeah you know at, at a certain point though I, i'd pretty much kind of forgotten what was in there um until we went to to shoot and uh, I was given my sides and stuff. Um, now, <laughs> I, I'm glad that you, you know, you're talking about um, my scene in the car. And I think it was, Kevin was specifically talking, I had mentioned that scene. It's like he was, he didn't really specify what scene, but he was just telling me, it's like, Marilyn, it's like, I, I, was going to cut that scene out, but because you had done such an awesome job on it, I, was, I couldn't really do it. It's like, but you know, th it doesn't really move the story along, he said. And this is when he had his stash event. Um, I forget when it was that he had that, when mm -hmm. we were doing some Q and A's at the Atlantic Highlands movie theater before he bought it. Um, right. And we had all, th there were three rooms and on the second night there was only two rooms that we were doing Q&A panels and we were in groups of like three or four. And uh, when we were in the back kind of waiting, that's, we just got to talking about, you know, the theater back in the days and all this kind of stuff. And um, that's when he mentioned that. But then cut to San Diego Comic-Con um, this year. No, yeah, this year. Mm -hmm. Um, where the whole topic of conversation came up again, and like it dawned on me 
that he had it earmarked for deletion even before we shot or I shot those scenes. Uh huh. And I was so I, I don't I think you could probably see it on my face. It's like, oh my God, I almost didn't make it in the film other than the, the <laughs> recreation scenes mm -hmm. um so i was just like oh fuck you know um yeah but uh but yeah um all i know is that when i came back and i had friends asking me um so how'd it go and and my response was i fucking killed it um, I, I just amazing. i knew i just, I just knew it, like i i got there so mm -hmm. I, you know, oh no 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 worries no no i <laughs> i don't <laughs> Yeah, I have so many things that go beep and bop on 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 this computer. I know absolutely. Well, that's got to be a great feeling as as an actor to like knock a scene out of the park so well that the director's like, "I got it. Can't cut it. Got it. it's got to be in there." That's that's got to be uh, pretty amazing. And I feel like as far as like the story goes, um, I think it's like pivotal for like th that interaction to happen because like I know I, I'm like. I'm not like hardcore deep in the Askew universe, so I'm sure there's like comic books about like things that happen with Veronica and Dante outside of the movies. I I've I've heard, <laughs> um, but like to to get to have that like mom moment again, see you see you, your two characters interact again, and then going into like the recreation scenes, and then like what ultimately ends up happening is like like pivotal to set that up because like as a fan, I like wanted that. I wanted the like, well, what is older and why was what would older and wiser veronica and maybe older and wiser dante like what would that moment look like if they ever ran in ran into each other again yeah and i agree you know because in my eyes to some degree it does kind of move the story along because people get to know what's transpired since the original with her and we see that it's like you know she may look like she had it all together but as is life, nobody has it together. Right, <laughs> right. Plans, and things don't always go according to plan. Um, so I, I think it gave everybody what they needed. Mm -hmm. And not to mention, you know, seeing, seeing Veronica and Dante together, you know, even sure. if they didn't wind up together. <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. It's like a beautiful, beautiful moment. Um, what how how is working with Kevin Smith as a director uh like changed over the years cuz i know early on he was like very much like word perfect verbatim cuz having take having a, done a, a theater degree i know it's like to work with like the directors who are like you have to get it exactly as it's written on the page it seems like he's maybe loosened up on that over the last few years so i was curious what working with him like in the like pressure cooker of a uh, late night indie film on Clerks was compared to doing Clerks three. Well, well, I, I think as long as the intention isn't um, altered by altering maybe one word and it, and and maybe you know just the insignificant word of like at or 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 you know something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but for me anyway. <laughs> I kind of try to get it word perfect as well, and yeah. to my detriment, um, especially when I'm doing self tape auditions, um, like you know, I, I let it get to me. And it's like we all do as actors and friends that I help. It's like no, 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 it's okay. It's like this is just the audition. It's like if you got the moment, just keep going. Mm -hmm. um, and and the same holds true, you know, when you're on set because then the script will just come to you. It's like okay, it's this and not that. Um, and again, you know, as long as you're not altering the intention of the scene or of the line um by changing a word um because sometimes you know just just one word can drastically change the meaning yeah yeah uh, but um yeah working with kevin um back then to now and and i got my first taste of that on reboot um just seeing how more confident he is uh -huh. um he may he may he may say otherwise <laughs> right. um but you know to to me he looks more confident as to what he wants um and you know in the in, in the look of it and 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 what we do and all that um so yeah you know and and quite a difference from 
the first time when there was just a few people of his friends helping out on crew to, I don't even know how many crew we had um, for this film, but mm-hmm. we definitely had professionals, uh, you know, doing the crew hair and makeup and uh, PAs and sound and all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, but the other thing too, though, is like we were during COVID and right. because of COVID, um, I didn't really get to be on set uh, all that often. Um, the only time that I was on set were when I had a scene to shoot or right. <laughs> on my birthday when I was in the hair trailer coloring my hair um, from the blonde that I let myself go to during the pandemic <laughs> <laughs> which you can see which i which scene i shot first <laughs> right <laughs> <coughs> amazing so it's so like covid protocols are like seriously that strict like if you don't have to be there then then you're not there right wow. yeah because we were testing every time uh we had to be on set we tested at the beginning of the week um if we were going to be there at a certain time or tested, you know, maybe like two days before. So mm-hmm. for the most part, I was in my hotel room keeping safe. The only time I went out was when I wanted to go and get something to eat and I was starving. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, I felt kind of lonely in, in that, in that sense, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's kind of, kind of, I imagine a, a really different experience compared to like, uh, um, I guess obviously shooting in in the bef- in the before times, and I even rem- I even remember hearing like, because uh, the other movie I had to make sure I saw in the the theaters during COVID, the heart even like the coming out of COVID was the new Jackass movie, and even I've heard them talk about like, oh, we couldn't do as much like in person stuff because we because it wouldn't be s- safe and stuff. That yeah, so yeah. you're just kind of like chilling in your in your ho- in your hotel wild um one one other thing i want to ask you and then i want to i want to talk about new jersey and and like theater a little bit is like i love that you mentioned welcome to the black parade as being in the script because i had just seen my chemical romance live like a couple days before going to see clerks three i'm jelly (laughs) and i was like and i was and i was like definitely that kid that was all about them i saw them like every time they would come through and i was just coming off of a night of screaming like we'll carry on so when it when that piano note hit as they're pulling up to the quick stop i was like fuck yeah this is gonna be great (laughs) yeah Um, Uh, i i would have loved to have seen them in concert um but yeah finances didn't let that (laughs) oh oh, i i I imagine sure sure (laughs) um so like doing um uh doing like a my little bit of research i know that you you started like doing in community uh doing community theater in in new jersey before like clerks happens when did you uh first get like the initial interest to want to start acting um so <laughs> i kind of say this in a joking way all the time but it's like a divorce uh uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> um let's see it's probably in 87 somewhere mm-hmm. around that time. Um, you know, I was just kind of looking for something. Um, and I had, I'm creatively, I always had a creative interest in things. Mm-hmm. I just didn't know how. And um, I certainly wouldn't have thought acting was going to be it because um, I'm such an introvert. Uh huh. Um, and extremely shy growing up but uh at a certain point how i started though was oh okay i see petite modeling and oh shoe modeling shoe modeling size six perfect i was like i have a i have a size six foot i was like let me go and do that which then kind of transitioned to maybe doing some things here and there nothing nothing big to mention Mm -hmm. and um but then I kind of eventually found um, this uh, a gentleman by the name of John Ide, who brought the actors' studio training to New Jersey. Uh huh. Um. So I don't know if it's still around, to be honest. But uh, he was in Red Bank at at a certain t- point. Um. And then uh, I think he's moved it, or if it's even still around. 
he may have retired um, for all I know. But mm -hmm. um, but I trained for a couple of years before I felt comfortable to kind of like, OK, let's put it into action. Let's let's go start uh, auditioning in the community theater circuit and see what uh -huh. happens. And, and at first it was basically, you know, let them get to know you, just show up. You're probably not going to get anything right away. Um, show persistence and, and, and eventually, you know, they uh, welcomed me into the fold and it's, mm -hmm. it was a lot of fun. And I got to work with Brian a couple of times before and after clerks. Oh, really? Um, very, very, very cool. And like, do you remember any of the, the plays you did very early, early on? Ooh, um, <laughs> well, the first one that I did, um, was, uh, a Chekhov vignette. Mm -hmm. There's a book of all these little vignettes. Um, I don't remember the title of the book or anything like that, but we were doing this in the basement of a church that was rented out. They rented out their stage. Mm -hmm. So this group would do their, their plays down there. And when, when the church got wind, it's like, <gasps> because it was the girl was a prostitute essentially. Sure. And how dad was taking his son to become a man and uh, there, was, there was no nudity or anything uh -huh. like that but it was it's just all suggestive the, yeah the, uh, right the suggestions the imp implying of and all that kind of stuff and like you can't have this piece in your and thankfully they didn't uh, take that scene away um but but being on the stage and having grown up as a middle child as i say um where you, one never feels heard actually sometimes i still don't feel heard but <laughs> um you know it was nice to be on that stage and people were actively listening to every word that i was saying uh-huh so that that's kind of like for me the what really kind of oh yeah i kind of like that um I, I i like people listening to what i have to say and the fact that it can make a difference sometimes in their lives, even though this is a whole character, you know, it's not real, but sometimes it makes a difference in their lives. Yeah. And to just be able to like have the moment where you can like affect somebody like emotionally yeah. from, from a performance, that's like a really huge, huge moment. I remember early moments on having, having that realization as, as well. It's like, Ooh, yeah. yeah. It's like kind of like, Ooh, what magic have I, I stumbled onto here? Yeah. That's very, that's very, very, that's that's very cool. I know what you mean because I remember like the first time I had a non-speaking role in the man who came to dinner, like when I was a sophomore in high school, mm -hmm. uh, and just being able to like go walk out, survive, and then get off. I was like, I did it. Ooh, like, <laughs> let's do more. Let's do more. What else? Well, what's what's spring musical? Oh, oh okay. Can't sing, but let's try. Um, <laughs> that's... Yeah, you know, it's like the nerves. The nerves were so bad um, prior to going on stage, and I would tell my friends and family, "Don't tell me. Just don't tell me, because it it will make it worse knowing that you're out there, and I don't want to suck." You know, so mm -hmm. um, so I I would just tell them, "Just go, but don't let me know that you're going." Um, just like like if there was someone who was going to be reviewing the show I, don't tell me <laughs> i don't want to know yeah um, exactly you don't want to get like in your head about yeah it. i mean you know i it, it was just something for me it's like i just i want to do my best mm -hmm. um and then um there were a couple shows that so with brian it's like we did Oh my gosh. Um, there's two that I can remember off the top of my head right now, um, other than Clerks, but did a show before Clerks and then a show after Clerks. And the the one before is was Wait Until Dark. I don't know if you're familiar with the show. Oh, no, um, I don't think I am. So um, in there, it is a very old uh, m movie mm -hmm. uh, with Audrey Hepburn and I forget all the others, but I played Audrey Hepburn's role where she's blind. She's a blind woman who lives in a basement apartment. Mm -hmm. And this little girl who lives upstairs brings this doll that has something hidden in there that the bad guys are trying to get. Well, mm -hmm. Brian played the bad guy. Uh -huh. um, and so here he is trying to kill me uh, to get what he wanted. Um, and then the other play that we did was a, an original uh, from a friend, 
uh, a South African. I don't want to butcher his last name, but um, mm. Andreas Uthiesian, something like that. Um, and it had to do with apartheid. And in that, he played my brother. Um, oh, cool. Yeah. So, yeah. So we <laughs> we played siblings, lovers, and uh, a killer. <laughs> <laughs> Just a real, <laughs> real range of uh, of relationships with uh, yeah. with with Brian there, and yeah. so is so is that a situation when like the auditions for for clerks come about, and then you you go in to read for Veronica, you're like, oh, Brian's fancy meeting meeting here. Well, um, no, actually, I didn't see him uh, during the auditions. Uh -huh. um, I had heard about the auditions while I was doing a play in Red Bank, as a matter of fact, same time next year. Mm -hmm. And um, the way that it was put was, it's like, oh, this kid, he's doing this uh, this uh, film. Um, so they're holding auditions at the First Avenue Playhouse. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I went and I did a monologue, which is on the Clerks' 10th anniversary DVD, mm -hmm. um, which landed me the role. And, and to be honest, it's like, and so I keep saying, it's like, everybody keeps telling me, it's like, stopped saying that. It's like, you know, it, it landed you the role because I was feeling like it was not up to the standard that I've done it before. Uh huh. Um, it felt a little forced in my mind, but yes, it got me the role, and only because it was a very emotional scene, mm -hmm. and everybody was kind of blown away. It's like, oh my god! It's like she was like really emotional. She was crying. It's like, how does she cry? And so, <laughs> so if anything, needless to say, there wasn't anything like that in the original, but it finally came uh -huh. in, in the second, in the third one. Um, but uh, I found out that Brian had auditioned or was auditioning when they mm -hmm. had callbacks for everybody. Um, and he was at the rec house, that recreation center that um, is where um, Kevin met Jason. Mm -hmm. um, and because he, he had asked me to be there that, that I, I have the re recollection that Kevin asked me to be there in case he wanted me to read opposite, you know, whoever was reading for Dante. Right. Um, although I never did. Um, and I think they remember it a little bit differently, you know, but who knows who's right at this point, you know, 28 sure. years later. <laughs> Actually, more like 29 because it was a year before or something like that. Right, right. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that's when I found out that he was there. So it, it was quite nice to know that, I was going to be be playing opposite someone who I had already worked with. Mm -hmm. That's very that's very very cool, and 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 like that that chemistry like comes through in that in that in the original and and even still into Clerks Three just like so perfectly. Like I I sort of love this sort of like this almost like kind of full circle moment of like you you and the, and and this guy have this do these plays do this huge like seminal independent movie and then come back into these characters uh these years later it's like it's like so few things like work out in in life like that like just kind of so perfectly it's so uh, that's that's really awesome yeah um yeah. so let me ask so 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 you get get clerks because i've watched that that documentary a couple times it's sort of like my indie film school bible like oh okay <laughs> I'll, I'll do this and do that no okay well i got a phone so i don't need to buy film stock anymore um <laughs> that that kind of, so I've watched that thing a, a bunch. I remember Kevin and and Mosier going like, she, "That's fucked up." She cried. What an actress. <laughs> um, so um so like so so you get clerks, and I'm curious as as far as like um getting into like working on like all that actor studio training. Like I don't know if the actor studio is like heavily Uta Hagen, or like or it's M it's all of it. He, he he taught us Meissner, Stanislavski, and Uta Hagen. And a bunch of other stuff that I don't remember the name of. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I, ask me, you know, what they are at this point. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. I know I just kind of kept certain things that worked with me. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wouldn't even want to say for me, but it worked with me um, emotionally. Um, and uh, and added some things of my own um, because what I always say is I don't ever want to be caught dead acting, right? <laughs> or like the appearance of like of performing. I, I I know what I know what you're saying. You just kind of are you want to work on on being 
like a, being, being, being natural, authentic, being organic. And yeah, absolutely. It's like really feeling what that character is supposed to be feeling for those words with those words. Mm -hmm. So you weren't like sitting down and like with the scripting, like thinking on intentions of what, what does Veronica want in this moment or, or what have you, you're just sort of kind of like go, you're just sort of kind of like going on, on. Well, I mean, for the first one, honestly, I can't remember what I did to prepare, but I mean, I, it was always there. It's like, you know, it's first and foremost, it's like the line memorization that's always a scary thing, especially with Kevin dialogue heavy. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, words. Um, but for this one, um, yeah, I was memorizing it and stuff like that. And I always, I was putting in, you know, what's, what's she feeling, what's going on. But the morning of, I woke up, was getting myself ready, and just just had my head in Veronica. And at a certain point, I just kind of sat down. It's like, what's going on? What's, you know, just writing down the emotions that she's feeling and, and through that. I kind of wish I had written it down on a better piece of paper now because I want to keep it. Right, um, right yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, um, so I, I went there. I went on to set. Um, just with a lot of high expectations for myself. Mm -hmm. I, I put a lot of pressure on myself, but I, was, but I wasn't letting it, the pressure get to me. Um, I just know I, I wanted, I really wanted to do my best on this and show everybody my growth mm -hmm. initial. So. Oh, fin fantastic. Well, it's, and, and I've always liked, I've, in my kind of like when I think about the the Esk Universe movies, I always feel like of like the main characters, I've always felt like Veron is kind of more of like like the most like moral center of a lot of that that universe. Like she's the one like like there's all this sort of like chaos happening around her like <laughs> all the time, especially in in the original uh, that's just going on, and then she's just going is like, okay, what? All right, fire extinguisher. What'd you do now? <laughs> <laughs> um well, and so like i i remember i still remember like the first time seeing that movie when i was in in college and just like really feeling seen like seen for the first time cuz i was i was doing like i had worked a ton of terrible retail jobs uh so i knew that <laughs> yeah so i like knew that world i i had jobs at K at kmart i had jobs like selling me comedy. too <laughs> you did I did. Oh. I was in high school. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, I was like fresh out of out of high school, and my first job. I, it was the first job I ever had. Six six bucks an hour to like load mulch in the garden shop. I started off at the service desk. Uh huh. Which is a terrible, terrible part of that job. Let me tell you. Oh my god. Um, and then they would have me help out in the toy section to kind of clean up and stuff like that when. We didn't need a, two people or more up mm -hmm. at the front desk. Um, and then I got promoted to toys. It's not a promotion. I got to clean no. up after everybody's toy, uh, everybody's kids. Because um, yeah. they would drop them off. You know, can't do that anymore. But they would drop the kids off in the toy department and say, oh, hey, a pet play while I go shop. Uh-huh. <laughs> I remember those days. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of on the, on the cusp of uh, when – when you it was still socially acceptable to do that um mm. so i remember many times just like oh okay i'll just uh, i guess i'll just be here or in electronics uh when i got a little bit older um, <laughs> uh, i i sell the day the the kmart that i worked at closed permanently i celebrated like the lollipop guild i was so happy <laughs> <laughs> I I'm so glad we have this shared experience, Marilyn. <laughs> That's wild. So so clerks so you fin so f clerks happens and then there's this slow build to it to it getting into Sundance and then bought uh, at Miramax. When that happens, what was what was kind of like that experience like like from going to Sundance and then after the the wide release of of the movie. Yeah, it it, w it was a lot of what's going to happen. Like, what do we expect? Um, a lot of fear, though, as well for me. Um, right, because you got you had to deal with a lot of like 
you know, like you know, the whole 37, the snowballing, all that stuff. You had a lot of Yeah, that but it wasn't even stuff. so much that because back in the, at that time is when paparazzi were starting to get a little popular and stuff like that. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, what if, what if we all really kind of get very popular and, and start getting more work and, and all that kind of stuff? It's like, mm -hmm. what kind of privacy are we going to have? Mm -hmm. So that kind of scared me. Actually, the, the thought – and – I have to say that it, it was fear of kind of making it as well. Um, hmm. it, as much as much as you're in this and you want it to happen, you kind of wonder was like, all right, if it happens, then what? Do I change? Do every does everybody else change? Mm -hmm. So, at a certain point in my life, it's like at, you know taking some courses and in in self sabotage and certain things you know mm -hmm. I, I asked myself the question well which scares me more making it or not making it and so that kind of changed my perspective mm -hmm. to just be a little bit more open and allow myself the challenges that that come around mm -hmm. um and still always um a learning experience or, or relearning of of all that uh -huh. um, especially as things go along and and not, not to mention you know sometimes people say certain things to me it's like oh well you know i the guys are definitely you know they have the popularity it's like i have like the secondary popularity and people are like mm -hmm. don't sell yourself short and i'm like look i'm not selling myself short i know my worth sometimes yeah. other people don't know it um and I am being realistic mm -hmm. uh, as, as, you know, to certain things. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. Pretty grounded uh, appro approach to a, a world where I feel like grounded people are very rare to find. Uh, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes I am. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not going to lie. It's like I have my moments. I, I certainly have my moments where it's like, reel it in, Marilyn. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, no, totally. And so after after clerks did it, you find did that make like getting an agent easier or like getting auditions easier? What was um, that like? You know, I mean, I guess I got an agent, but it wasn't an agent that really was going to do very much for me. Um, and also, I was still in New Jersey. Um, I don't know if moving to LA at that time would have been beneficial and would have maybe catapulted me a little bit further mm -hmm. um, because I moved out here four years after uh, the movie. And, and the only reason was because I had certain obligations um, that I had to be there for. Um, one of them being a daughter who was underage, you know, and once she turned the age of 16, I was like, all right, you know, she's not a baby anymore. She can take care of herself. I yeah. leave her with family and um, she's okay, you know, uh -huh. um, because I didn't know what it was going to be like moving out here um, on my own. I wasn't afraid, probably should have been, uh, mm -hmm. but <laughs> it, it, it was a really, really, really tough six months to a year yeah. of just getting on my feet, finding work. And I, I was working in a salon back in, in Jersey, um, but it was quite difficult to get my license here in California um, because of, hours of that re that are required mm -hmm. schooling um and so it was difficult finding a job i didn't think it would be that tough and and it was so yeah yeah you know it, so it's a good thing that i didn't bring her along because i wouldn't have wanted that for her that that difficulty and always wondering you know it's like oh next paycheck i had i don't have any work right now and yeah mm -hmm. yeah and, <laughs> I've been doing that for the last uh, 22 years now. So. <laughs> right. But it seems like it's kind of been working, working out for you from what I can, from what I've seen at least. Not without its moments. It's, uh -huh. it's, I mean, I am not making a living as an actor. That's, that's the goal. That is the goal. Um, but I'm also getting older, uh, you know, certain uh -huh. roles that are not going to be coming my way and certain roles that are, um, and, uh, you know, at a certain point, I'm not going to lie, it's like I've had my moments of like, all right, 
do we do we continue do mm-hmm. we continue um you know especially when life gets really really difficult and i i see my bank account going down and and uh i try different ways of of seeing how what i can do to to earn in, income right and it's not it's never been just working at a salon it's, it's also freelancing working on sets doing hair and makeup and mm-hmm. finding yeah. little odd jobs working in, in an office for someone and do you know was, yeah <laughs> I know, I know all, I, I'm picturing, I, I know exactly what you mean. Like, you're just kind of like piecing, you're just, the puzzle is there and you just kind of have to like, what are the pieces that are, are going to get it together? I, yeah. I relate, like when I first moved, I've been in New York City like 12 years now and I've probably only had my shit together maybe for like the last four or five. Uh, if yeah. that make if that makes sense, that, that includes absolutely, a lot of time with absolutely. my... Yeah, that includes a lot of the time I'm with my now, my my now wife. Uh, she big give her big credit. I always like to say that out loud on the show a lot. Um, but yeah, like when I first moved to New York, I was renting like barely being able to afford like a a room in an apartment. Not even like a closet. The, a closet. Yeah, uh, a a closet. And then <laughs> and then like okay, get a get a back get a an, a background gig on Law and Order. Get a background gig on on this TV show. Usher at at radio Usher at Radio City, and then I was still like the 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 amount of times I had to pawn my guitar just to get a Metro card. Oh. Uh, I got it back every every time, luckily. But <laughs> yeah, uh, it's just I, like those times like were really testing like my, my commitment to, uh, or my desire to want to keep on the path that I had kind of selected for for myself. And and while I don't think I ever like. I don't feel like I've ever fully deviated. I just opened my, I just opened myself up to like stuff that working at it at a different way, if that makes any sense. Yeah, absolutely. And, and many a time I ask myself, it's like, all right, because, you know, I just, you know, they say if it's not working, you got to change what you're doing. Otherwise it's not going to change. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it's a better, <laughs> uh, sentence than that but essentially that's what it is and and it's difficult sometimes to figure out well what do i have to do differently um Mm -hmm. you know and and let's face it for some people it just comes easily you know everything comes easily and for others it's it's not that you're doing anything wrong or anything differently than what they're doing it just yeah that's you know the universe works in that way of you know, the energy going to one or over the other. And it's like, and that's another thing mm-hmm. that I'm kind of working on. It's like, you know, not putting out certain negative energy. Yeah. So that, that doesn't come back to me. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of the, this, this same way. And the other thing I've always, uh, I, I try to focus on a lot now is just kind of like, uh, I, I try not to look around at what other people are doing too much. I yeah. just try to kind of like keep my head down and just do do my things. And then also what has helped is I have a healthy amount of things that I control kind of the destiny of. Like this this podcast, no one's helping me do this. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I, do, I do this. I'm not, uh, the only thing that affects the direction is the kindness of, of strangers mm-hmm. uh, like yourself. Um, so that's why I'm always really appreciative when everyone one that talks to me but like just having something that's not based on like oh the casting director wants this kind of person for this role or this person that casting director has a relationship with this person's agent like all that other kind of like show show the other the other part it's you know because they say no don't take it personally um as far as not being cast in a certain role but but how can you not take it personally if you remind them of your ex (laughs) Uh uh-huh yeah to some degree that is it's it's not personal to me but it's personal <laughs> right cuz i lost out because i happened to look like somebody or i was too short i was too tall that'll never happen but um <laughs> <laughs> i'm too pretty i'm too ugly you know um and so at a certain point you kind of realize it's like you know what just do your best just do your mm-hmm. best totally i'm 6 foot 7 so i i embrace the like uh Okay, I'm gonna. All right, uh, all right, all right. Let me just search for basketball player. 
uh, <laughs> on, on, on like uh, on, on actors access and go from there. <laughs> um, just uh, a couple of things I would love to, to ask you just about kind of like the nuts and bolts of like be, being an actor. And I don't even know what it's like now, but like, cause I don't even know if I quite understand how you joined SAG-AFTRA now. So, you know, before there was SAG and then there was AFTRA. Uh-huh. One way, the easy way to join SAG was just join AFTRA because there weren't any requirements to draw to uh, join AFTRA. And so uh-huh. then once you actually are on a project or whatever, then you kind of you join if you want to over here after a certain amount of time and uh, requirements that you had with that union. Um, and, but then once they joined, it's like whoever was in AFTRA just automatically became SAG. Um, but as far as joining SAG, what I had to do, I worked background, um, mm-hmm. which I always tell people who are wanting to get into the business, it's like your best training ground as far as like what to do on set and what you shouldn't do on set, sit there, listen to everybody, watch what is going on. And, um, don't, you know, yeah, you want to be friendly to the other people that are there, the other background work and stuff like that, but don't, don't make it your social hour or day, Mm -hmm. I should say. Um, and, uh, and eventually just, just be available, be available because you might get a a speaking role at some point. Mm -hmm. Um, so with the union, and I think it's still the case right now, you have to get three vouchers. Um, vouchers meaning it's like you got bumped up um, on whatever it is that you were doing that day. And sometimes, you know, mm-hmm. I'm going to say that the producers and stage manager or whatever play favorites. It's like because if you get to know them and it's like, you know, you have rapport with them. It's like maybe right. they're like, hey, here you go, Marilyn. Um, you've been you've been really cool. So uh-huh. uh, and um so yeah, I got my three vouchers and and uh on I went to get uh my my union card. Um I don't even know how much that card is today, but boy, it was still expensive back then, so I can't imagine how expensive it is now. Yeah, I I imagine <laughs> what because of in, inflation and, and again probably a lot of external factors, I can imagine it's only go, gone up. I I don't even know if this is true. I might be making this up. I feel like at a certain point, like maybe during the pandemic to kind of boost numbers, there was a thing where you could just kind of like pay to get pay to, to join, not even have to do these, the vouchers anymore. I don't know if that, Oh, I don't know. I don't know if that I, ended up happening or not, but um, I don't know. It, it ended up being, I, I do long. know that I, I tell people right now though, it's like, look, join when you have to, not because uh-huh. you want, because you know, yeah, there's work out there, but get get the training that you need. Because I, oh my gosh, I can't tell you how many times people come to me and ask, you know, how do they get in the business? And it's like, well, are you training? And like, no, train. You have to train. You have to know what it is that you're doing and why you're doing it. Um, why is this telling you what's going on in the scene? Um, and and then maybe start. To, getting the training in other places from casting director or on set. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's like a lot of people just kind of want, want it. They just want it. It's like, you can't just go and expect to be famous. Because some of them are just looking for fame as well. Mm -hmm. Um, You can't just go in expecting to be famous and famous and making a lot of money. It's like, um, I, I didn't, label myself the movie star other people labeled me the movie star and with that label comes certain expectations and they think that oh because i have the movie star status that Mm. i live in this posh apartment and and it could be further but from the truth and you know that i have this bank account it's like no all i have is a checking account i have nothing for retirement which is looming in the in the distance there mm-hmm. big as a matter of fact yeah. <laughs> so so yeah um you know it, it, there's a lot of work that has to go in it so expect to do the work absolutely uh, i I, could, I couldn't agree more and as far as auditions now um like and because auditions like 
is a technique all onto its own. Is and I imagine even like in person is very different from uh, like doing self tapes. Is there like a, a key piece of advice you'd give for like audition technique? Oh my gosh, uh, it, it's so difficult. Um, and you know, some people, a lot of actors really hate the audition process because it, it's it's so different. It's like, because you're having to learn this stuff immediately because sometimes you only have overnight to be able to get it or two hours to get this scene together and it may be one scene it may be 10 mm -hmm. um it, it's it's like it's insane how these days they are coming up with giving you 10 to 20 pages when they know they know immediately from the onset of watching you on that screen uh, of whether you know they want you for it or not um but it's just be present um and lighting certainly makes a diff difference um you know the mm -hmm. equipment that you have to do the self tapes and pretty much everything is self tape now um the only thing that isn't self tape is commercials commercials have actually gone back in office um but that's mm -hmm. a whole different kind of acting compared to movies or tv um, oh yeah yeah but I, I have to say that it's just be in the moment be bold with the the material mm -hmm. um you know you don't get in your head and you it's like you um this one course that i took it's like sherlock holmes in the text um mm -hmm. oh my god i forgot his name right now um, he lives in Atlanta. Oh, don't hate me. Don't hate me that I can't remember your name right now. If you think of it, email me and I'll make sure. To <laughs> okay. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, it's like you, ha you have to kind of go into the text and, and be a detective as mm -hmm. to why and create your backstory and, and things like that. So. Uh-huh a lot there's a lot <laughs> oh yeah like just having answers to all of the questions that are not being answered by the the words almost like to kind right. of build in that 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 backstory right i i i, and, I, and, I, I it's, i'm sorry it's like because um sometimes people well it's like oh she's supposed to be mad here or this is what's kind of this this line it's like oh she's going to be this and she's going to be that but they're acting it out versus feeling it mm -hmm. and yelling or anger does not necessarily mean elevated voice yes absolutely absolutely i i am known to be uh, i never yell but because again six foot seven like i um, you're menacing if I, very menacing if i yell but like you know the, the <laughs> sort of the sort of like quiet or looming anger or i just watched uh or uh, er, because it's christmas season i watched uh, the george c scott christmas carol oh, uh, okay. i don't i don't know if you've ever seen it but it's a really I probably great... have i just never know which is what or anything like that and sometimes i don't remember the title of movies it's like oh i just really liked it <laughs> so oh, terrible and that Scrooge is like very like not the like yelling bah humbug Scrooge. It's like very much like a Jordan like stern like because I always see him as Patton, uh, like a, that mm -hmm. kind of like stern, quiet, like reserved anger. That's right. that that's that's very very key. That that's very key. Thank you. I yeah. I appreciate uh, I appreciate this this insight. Um, I would also love to ask you. You directed a short film recently. I did well. Actually, not recently, but recently, actually, finally finished. <laughs> uh -huh. um, back in 2017, <coughs> um, a group of friends, we all got together and created our own content. Um, had a crowdfunding on Indiegogo. Mm -hmm. Did quite raise all that we wanted to do. Sh I think it was eight or nine short films. And I did have one that I kind of wrote. It wasn't dialogue heavy. It was just more of a, a piece of things happening. Uh huh. And um, so we raised enough to do three of those. Mine being one because uh, quite a bit of the funds raised were from my end uh -huh. of fans and family. Um. So then in like 2017 or 2018. 
three days on a weekend, we shot three shorts, one each day. It was insane. Um, but once we were done, we had no money for post. <laughs> uh-huh. You know, the famous last words. Um, yeah. So it basically kind of sat there, you know, waiting for someone to have the money <laughs> to finish post. Um, two of the others kind of came up with the funds or, you know, to, to finish the films off themselves. And then it wasn't until the beginning of this year that I was just like, all right, we got, we got to do this. Got to do this. Especially seeing that Kevin started his own film festival. Uh-huh. Um, it was originally supposed to be in August. So it's like we were under the gun. Um, the writer of the piece, who was also played the main uh, female, and then uh, the producer, one of the producers played her mom in the uh-huh. piece. And um, there was one of the guys who was kind of in the group, but he was kind of in and out because um, his schedule was always changing. But he was an editor. And he's like, you know what? I'll edit it. It's like, oh, thanks. Um, so he put it together, and then eventually we were just able to kind of then put certain things together when we finally finished it. And it got accepted into Kevin's Film Festival, mm-hmm. which was this past weekend. Um, uh-huh. And mine had shown on Thursday evening, December 1st. Um, but I don't know how it did because I was in Columbus, Ohio at a, at a convention. Right. Um, you know, the girls did tell me that it, they heard a lot of sniffles in the audience. So, okay, great. But I just, I wish I could have been there and I, I, I need to know. It's like, all right, did it, did it hit well? Did it, yeah. Did it resonate? Did, you know, how good was it, you know, received? Right. <laughs> so, um, we have, um, we have it submitted it to i don't know i think about another five or six festivals um and just waiting to hear um when their deadline comes up whether we're accepted into it or not gotcha well i i hope uh i hope you get into a, a few more because i uh first uh, is this your first time directing something yeah yeah that's yeah. that's really cool Thank you. Um, yeah, there are some things that I'm like, oh, damn, I wish I had done that because I was, you know, we, we wore the many hats. So mm-hmm. I was also a set designer <laughs> and dresser. Sure. Um, so there's certain things that I kind of wish I had done, you know, but, you know, hindsight. Um, and uh, something that, you know, once you have a few more people actually working on the project, it's a little bit easier. <laughs> Oh, t- totally. Like the, it's so, it, like I've, I've been very much in a lot of creative things been like, I can do, I can do everything. I'll, I'll learn how to do this. I'll, I'll learn how to do that. But then when, when you get bringing a few other people, it like it just takes the weight off so, so yeah. much, like yeah. makes the whole experience so much more, uh, enjoyable for, for sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, cause I, I, I I, re- I hope I get to see it at 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 some point because that's uh I'm very excited for for you that uh it Thank had a, a good showing at at Kevin's uh festival. Um one more thing I'd love to ask you before we we close out here I like to manifest stuff on the podcast sometimes. Is there mm-hmm. something um that you haven't done or or made yet creatively that is sort of kind of like the the dream project like that you haven't done yet? Oh gosh, you know, honestly, it's it's to break into TV. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I have to, I have to get clear on that here, because it's and you saying manifest, I can, I feel like you would understand that. It's like we can actually manifest things, but unless we're very specific. Mm-hmm. You know, it may it may not come because it's like oh, okay, you want to do this, but it's like. Which one? I, I want to break into TV, but it's like, what TV show? What role? What, you know? Mm-hmm. So I have to kind of get clear on that because there's so many shows I would love to be on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, I could totally see you as, like, uh, like, a fu- like, a fun, like, second lead on, like, a network sitcom as, like, the kind of, like, zany neighbor or, like, the... Uh, mm-hmm. Or, like, the unusual m- mom or, or something like that. I could totally, I could totally see that for Thank you, you. Yeah, abs- absolutely no yeah because and and this is maybe i'm i'm because f- it's fresh on my mind because i 
w- went to California for the first time and, and really spent time there the, just this past August and did like the Warner Brothers tour and like sat on the couch from the Big Bang Theory right. and whatever. Um, from Friends. <laughs> ah, <better>. yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I went, I went on that tour as well, because um, there was a, um, um, not a mixer, but the, the industry event mm-hmm. that was at the Warner Brothers lot um, a few years ago, and, you know, I had to, I had to do the whole Friends thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, like, of, of course, I, I, I did that, um, and then I did, a, I did Paramount as, as well, but WB was the, the big one, because my wife's like a huge Harry Potter nerd. Uh, yeah. So I had to go do the like sorting hat and all that, <laughs> all that stuff. Um, well, very, very cool. I could totally see t- TV for you. That would be, uh, that would be amazing. I would, I, I hope that happens for you. Is there anything else we can plug or promote before we get out here? Oh, well, I, I was going to say that I was going to add to that. It's like, oh. I would totally, totally be on anything Star Wars and Marvel. <laughs> yes. <You know? laughs> Oh my god, my god. Yeah. Like, okay. If we're gonna wish, let's wish big. Yeah. Um yeah, definitely um Star Wars and Marvel. Even Star Trek too. <laughs> oh one one hundred percent one hundred percent. I, I am not I've only watched the first episode of Andor, but everything I've heard is that it's ama- it's amazing. You know, I <laughs> Brian was telling me how, how great it was and stuff like that. And I gotta say, it's like and it could be just because it's the first and second episode, you know, it's kind of has to build itself up because I was having a hard time getting through that. So, all right, we have to revisit that because everybody's loving it. And um, usually if I give it a chance um, and not that I would hate it or anything like that, but it's like because um, I have different levels of like, um, I don't usually hate the show. I may not care for it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um so yeah, I have to kind of revisit that show. Gotcha. I can't imagine there isn't somebody who works at Lucasfilm or Disney that is not a Clerks fan in some way that would not want to hook up you or Kevin and Brian or. On that note, <laughs> um, so, oh gosh, when was this? At some point this this year, last year, I don't know. Um, went to a Loki event where they showed the first episode of Loki up on the big screen. Uh-huh. And it's, it's what's called a For Your Consideration event for the Emmys. Ah, okay. Um, and so afterwards, it's like, you know, then they, they move everybody into this one room for cocktails and hors d'oeuvres and just passing around. And you get to know people and whatever and whatnot. And a friend of mine who invited me to the event, we were at the bar getting something to drink mine's always water uh (laughs) because i don't drink um and i hear this woman speaking to michael the showrunner of loki Uh uh-huh and um and i don't know what she was saying but at a certain point i hear him say thank you you know thank you and i and i turn around i got bold i don't know where this came from but i got bold i said no thank you for loki and uh, we just kind of started talking. And then my friend, who kind of becomes my publicist, he's not, he's an actor as well. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, this is Marilyn. Uh, she was in Clerks. And he was like, he started gushing. I was just like, is this <laughs> happening? Is, is, is this, is, are you getting this on video? He's not getting this on video. I was like, but oh my God, thank you so much. I, it, was, it was mind blowing. Yeah. But now I have to reach out. It's like, Amazing. he rolls in Loki for me. <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. That is spectacular. Yeah. Oh man. So okay. So season two, I feel like this is going to be be <laughs> it for you, Marilyn. That's 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 awesome. And is there anything else uh, we can mention before we we get out here? Um. Yeah. You can find me on social media on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Twitter. It's that clerk girl. Everything else is Marilyn Gigliotti. Although um, I may have some openings on my Facebook, but normally it's like it goes to the fan page that is also run by me um Mm -hmm. so yeah you know it's like that's how you can keep up with what's going on in my life (laughs) awesome well thank you so so much this really like meant a lot a lot to me personally i and it was a true joy getting like to to chat with you this was uh, a real delight and i sincerely really really appreciate it thank you 
Thank you so much for having me. It was really great. Folks, that is episode 300 of Between Awesome and Disaster. That is Marilyn Gigliotti, everybody. Actress, director, um, truly a, a, a wonderful, a wonderful person and a, a super talented actress. Um, if you're listening to this and somehow have not seen uh, Clerks or Clerks 3, uh, definitely uh, worth your time. Uh, love those flicks and love Marilyn. Uh, thank you so much again, Marilyn, for for chatting with me. It was a, a real pleasure, and uh, I really appreciate it. And I appreciate everyone that has appeared as a guest on Between Awesome and Disaster and everyone uh, of you who has listened to it and been a part of helping me build this thing. Anyone who has uh, helped me with audio editing, with studio space and, and logistics, uh, thank you. Uh, and uh, of course, the most important person I have to thank is my incredibly supportive wife, uh, Chelsea Connor, who uh, knew I had a dream and was <laughs> and got me my first uh, recording equipment to podcast. So thank you, Chelsea. I love you. And uh, thank you all again so much for being here. If you enjoyed this podcast, there are 299 other episodes to enjoy as well. Um, you can go to awesomedisaster.com. That has links to everywhere you can get the show. We are on Apple, Stitcher, and Spotify. If you want to give us a, a five-star rating and a review on Apple Podcasts, that helps us uh, with the almighty algorithm. And you can give us a follow on Stitcher and Spotify as well. And if you want to go a little bit further in supporting the show, you can go again to awesomedisaster.com. It's got links to all of my social media at Comic Will Carry on Twitter, at Will Carry23 on Instagram. And uh, if you want to go a little bit further and support the show, we do have a merch store as well, which you can check out there. And uh, you can go to patreon.com slash awesomedisaster as well. I uh, will be working on doing some more stuff with the Patreon in 2023. I have been experimenting over the years with uh, the exclusive content that is there. Um, so if you've got an idea of what you would be interested in, uh, you can also send me a, a message, an email at awesomedisaster.com. So uh, thank you all again uh, for 300 episodes. I appreciate you all. And I will see you next time between awesome and disaster. Stay safe, get vaxxed and boosted, and stomp out fascism. Take care, everybody.